Hi hey everyone, this is just a video walkthrough to get you started with SPSS so that you can use it for the rest of the class. I know Dr. Levy has already put some instructions on Canvas and he's probably going to talk to you about it in class, but this is just so you can have a video to walk you through how to download SPSS and get things started so you can start using it. So the way that we download SPSS is we're in my ISD right here. We're going to click on view more, my apps. Then we're going to search for SPSS software. So we're just going to type SPSS in right here. So based on whether you have a Mac or a Windows, you'll want to decide between those. And if you're not sure whether you have a 32-bit or 64-bit operating system, you can check that by going into settings right here, system, and then scrolling down to about, and then you'll find where it says system type, it's either 64 or 32-bit. Okay, so we're out of 64, so I'm gonna download the SPSS 26 64-bit version. And this is gonna download, I'm gonna go under student, download it as a student. And this is going to put a zip file on my computer, which I'm going to use to install SPSS. So make sure you have good Wi-Fi before you before and during this download because it takes a few minutes. Once it's done, go ahead and click on this. And then we got to extract this because it's a zip file. So we're going to click up here, extract all, and then it's going to show us the files when they're done. And this will take a little bit of time too. Okay, now that these files have been extracted, we're going to open this folder. And then we're going to click on this the client 64 bit and that's going to get our installation process going. Now the other things in this folder are this there's this PDF file and we're going to use these codes that are in this PDF file to license and authorize our use of the SPSS software but that'll be a later step. Okay so after you click on this client 64 bit, it'll take a bit of time to open the installation wizard. And then you'll get to this part where we'll talk about licensed materials. So click next. You need to accept the terms in the license agreement or to use SPSS. I'm not going to use Essentials for Python unless you really want it. You can say yes. I'm going to say no. And then here's the folder destination. You can put that wherever you want if you want to click change. And then we're going to start the installation. So this will take several minutes. So go ahead and pause throughout this video. If it's taking your computer a little bit more time to download, install, go ahead and click pause. So once it's finished downloading, it'll ask if you want to do the license authorization wizard now, and you'll want to have that checked and say finish. And then we'll need to use this PDF file. So let's open that. So we're going to want to use the license code for SPSS version 26. This is the SPSS authorization wizard. We're going to use this one. Click next. So we need a code here. So we're going to take the code from version 26 right here. Copy that. And paste it into there. And then we should be pretty set once this finishes. Now we have SPSS on a computer and we can start doing whatever we want, including the homework assignments for this class. So now what I want to do is I want to give you a quick overview of SPSS. So to open it, I just type in my search here, SPSS, click on it there, it'll open up. Okay, so this will open up to see if you want to um, download or put in a new data set. I'm just going to exit out of this to give you an overview. So this is what SPSS, SPSS looks like. The first thing I want to talk about are these data view and variable view tabs. So what happens is um, in the data view, this gives you the actual values of the variables that you have in your data set. Now, if I wanted to go to the variable view, this would list some of the variables I have, and it's kind of 
you can think of it as a metadata where it gives you information that describes different types of data, the variables, and a little bit more on the type of data you have. So for example, if I wanted to create a new variable, this is where I would do it. So let's say one of my variables is gender, and then another one of my variables is height. Okay, so those are my variables, and this gives me a little bit more information, like the labels, the values, the how I'm coding missing data. And then if I wanted to see what this data looks like in data view, I would click on this tab, and you'll see that there's no data in here right now, but what I can do is I can just enter in data however I want. So I can put in zeros, ones, assuming one is coded for females, zero is coded for males or whatever it is. And then I could enter height and then if I'm doing it by inches, I could do like 70, 60, five, whatever I want, okay? So this in the data view is the actual data again. And then in the variable view, I can see kind of what the metadata looks like, more information about what my data is, okay? Now, if I want to save this file for some reason, I would click Save As, and then I could save it with whatever, I, whatever name I wanted. And then with these files, if you're submitting homework, then you would just want to have these files saved. You could submit them, okay? All right, so that's the end of this one. We'll probably do another one for you in the future.